way, not only the tradition Canadian custodians of this country throughout Australia, we pay our respect to the elders past and present. At around 4:30 a.m. on the 25th of April 1915, the first Australian, the first soldiers of Australian and New Zealand Army Corps landed in Aratina area on the Gallipoli Peninsula. On the same morning, soldiers from Britain, France, and their colonials launched assaults on nearby Cape Hill and Double Tail. Historians estimate that there were some 2,000 Australians killed or wounded on the 25th of April, but there are no precise casualty figures for that day. For eight months, the Anzac hung onto their positions on the ridge and gullies above Anzac Cove. They could not go forward, but the Turks could not force them back into the sea. On December 15, the Anzac were evacuated, and by then, about 8,700 Australians and 2,700 New Zealanders had been killed. In total, at least 130,000 Allied and Turkish soldiers died as a result of the Gallipoli campaign. More than 3,000 Australian nurses served in Australia during World War I, and they worked under terrible conditions, and 25 lost their lives. The women worked in hospitals, on hospital ships and trains, or in casually clearing stations close to the front line. For many wounded soldiers, there was no more welcome sight than a skilled nurse who would tend to their injuries and who could speak to them in their own access, accent about home. Nurses' devotion for sick and wounded in their care was universally admired by soldiers. An Australian officer, Lieutenant Harold Williams, who was wounded on the Western Front in September 1918, reflected that these women worked their long hours among such surroundings without collapse spoke volumes of their willpower and their sense of duty, and the place reeked with odour of blood and aseptic dressings and unwashed bodies. The nurses saw soldiers <coughs> in their most pitiful state, wounded, blood-stained and dirty. We also remember all those who contributed on the home front, supplying material and moral support to Australians serving overseas. The sacrifices made by families who cared for their loved ones who returned home with physical injuries and mental illness should also be remembered. For them, the effects of the war often lasted for decades, and their work was unusually carried out in the privacy of family home, and they received no recognition or reward. For, for historian Charles Bean, the word Anzac stood for reckless valour in a good cause, for enterprise resourcefulness, fidelity, comradeship and endurance that will never own defeat. These qualities in the original Anzacs who landed on the 25th of April 1915 can also be seen in the service of those who came after them <clears throat> in the Second World War, Korea, Malaya, Vietnam and in recent conflicts in Afghan, Afghanistan and Iraq on peacemaking operations by like those in the Solomon Islands and East Timor. Anzac is a day to remember all those who have served in Australia's armed forces for more than a century and also to give thanks to those serving our armed forces today.